communication with France. They're having a terrible, terrible fire. You probably saw, some of you have heard. Uh, some of you have not because you've been here. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, the fire that they're having at the Notre Dame Cathedral uh, is something like few people have witnessed. Uh, when we left, we had a whole group of your great representatives. And when we left uh, the plane, uh, it was, it was uh, burning at a level that you rarely see a fire burn. It's one of the uh, great treasures of the world, uh, the greatest artists in the world. Probably, if you think about it, I would say, Jovita, it might be uh, greater than almost any museum in the world. And it's burning very badly. It looks like it's burning to the ground. So, yes. so uh, <clears throat> that puts a damper on what we're about to say, to be honest, because that is uh, beyond countries. That's beyond anything. That's a part of our, uh, our growing up. It's a part of our culture. It's a part of our lives. That's a, a truly great cathedral. And I've been there, and I've seen it, and there's no cathedral. I think I could say there's probably no cathedral in the world like it. It's a, tar it's a terrible scene. They think it was caused by, at this moment, they don't know, but they think it was caused by renovation. And I hope that's uh, the reason. Renovation, you know, what's that all about? But it's a terrible sight to behold. Uh, with that being said, uh, I want to tell you that a lot of progress has been made by our country in the last two and a half years. Hard to believe we're already starting to think about <laughs> We're already starting to think about our next election, and it's, uh, it's moving along. We're moving along very nicely. Uh, uh, we've raised far more money than anybody, and not that that's the critical factor. In fact, I was criticized coming up. I was criticized that I didn't raise as much money as Hillary Clinton, that I only spent half. It's actually much less than half, but I don't want to tell her. And in the old days, if you would spend less and win, you got credit. Today, you have to spend more and win. So if I would have spent more, I would have been given a lot more credit. But the fact is, we did spend a lot less money, much, much less money than the Democrats that we won. And I think now we're much better positioned than we were because we've done so much. You know, I used to stand up and say, we're going to cut your taxes. Well, we cut your taxes. Biggest tax cut in history. We're going to give you Anwar. I gave you Anwar. <laughs> That hasn't been done. Everyone's been trying to do that since Ronald Reagan. That's the energy, one of the largest in the world, as you know, in Alaska. Uh, we're going to cut regulations at a level that uh, nobody's ever seen. We're going to get rid of the individual mandate from Obamacare, which we did. We'll do even further than that. That was a big thing, by far the most unpopular thing. And, Obamacare, and uh, we're going to have something after the election, assuming you elect Republicans. We're not only going to save all of your private plans, that's 180 million people, but we're going to give you something much better as an alternative, just as an alternative to Obamacare, much less expensive in terms of premiums, and uh, the deductible will be much, much less. Right now, you have a deductible. They're averaging $7,500, much more in some cases. And uh, people don't get to use it. And if they do, they have bigger problems than the deductible. They have some very big problems. But uh, this has been a very special state. Uh, it's been a, a rare, a rare victory for Republicans, and we almost won it. Uh, one more speech. <laughs> one more speech. And uh, I think they've treated you very unfairly on immigration. I think you've been treated extremely unfairly in the world of immigration. And a lot of things are going to change. But under the previous administration, America's rich natural resources were put under lock and key. You know that. And uh, thousands of acres in superior national forests, jobs and everything else were just taken away, ripped away. Last June, I traveled to Duluth and announced that we would be taking the first steps to rescind the federal withdrawal and superior national forest and restore mineral exploration for the miners and the workers of Minnesota. And we have really done that to a point that, in fact, your great congressman, I'm going to introduce them in a little while. They're here. 
And the first thing they said is that, uh, to protect our security and our workers in the Minnesota Iron Range, okay? The Iron Range. And, you know, I, I opened that up, and we are now — our steel industry is vibrant again. It was dead. It was going to — we were not — we weren't going to have a steel industry, if you can even believe that. Now, obviously, you need that for military and for protection. You need that for a lot of things. But you need it for military. You need it — we can't play games. We had no steel industry. It was going to die, the rest of it, the remaining little bit. You'd see these massive plants that used to take care of so much of the world's steel, and, and they'd be using a little corner, or they'd be using nothing. And U.S. Steel, USS Steel, and if you look at uh, — well, United States Steel has one, but you have many steel companies. They're adding plants all over the country. They're expanding plants. And they're going to be getting their iron ore right from here. I hear you have among the best in the world, they say. Uh, I put a uh, tariff on the dumping. They were dumping — China and other countries were dumping steel all over the United States. And uh, in many cases, it was very inferior product, very bad stuff. And we need it for the military. We need it for structural buildings. We need it for a lot of structures. So you got to have great steel. And uh, we get it right from you. And I remember uh, I was here about six, seven months ago, and a man came up to me. And I've been here a lot, by the way, campaigning for your — your great representatives. But if you remember, Tom, a man came up to me, and he was crying. Strong man, big, tough guy, but he was crying. And he said, President Obama took our life away when he closed the range. Just those words. He said, took our life away, took our blood. and." Uh, you gave it back to us. And uh, that's really moving along rapidly, and it's uh, — a lot of great things are happening, a lot of great things. But I, I never forgot that statement. You were standing with me, and I never forgot that statement. Today, unemployment in Minnesota, because of your federal government policies that I have been very insistent on, is down to uh, the lowest level, I think, that you've ever had, 3.1 percent. And jobless claims in Minnesota have reached their lowest level in 22 years. We have Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota has added more than 7,500 brand-new mining, logging, and construction jobs, which nobody expected. If I would have said that prior to the election, everybody would say, oh, that's terrible, what he's saying. It's uh, an exaggeration. That can't happen. We're going to lose those jobs. Well, 7,500 brand-new mining, logging, and construction jobs. Thanks to our tremendous tax cuts, the biggest, Minnesota families are saving more than $5 billion on their 2018 tax bills. Five billion. <laughs> And 1.2 million Minnesotans have seen a reduction in their utility bills — think of that — as a direct result of the tax cuts alone. That's not to mention all of the other things that we've done. 1.2 million Minnesotans. And the average Minnesotan has seen an annual income gain of more than $1,700 since my election. So you're up 